Recorded live. All right, hello everyone. Looks like a hi. Hi Frank. I think I got you unmuted here. All right. How is everybody? Okay. How are you going? Doing very well. How about you? Good. Good. All right. Looks like we have uh, got several folks on and ready to go, Frank. So uh, here we are uh, tonight on the. Uh, University, Eucadia, uh, introduction call. We're here tonight. We have Frank O'Collins from Australia. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Frank. Thanks, Jerry. Um, thanks and welcome to, to everyone who's on the call tonight. Uh, we didn't advertise broadly about uh, tonight's call, but what we are going to try and do is keep this time on a regular basis so that folks can hear about it and plan it in their calendar. And welcome to all those who will be downloading the call later on. You'll be able to download this call along with the other Eucadia calls from the TalkShoe site, but also from the Eucadia, Infam- the Eucadia University site. And that, that web address is uh, http uh, university, uh, dot, uh, Eucadia dot info that's uh, uh university uh dot eucadia dot info um i just want to firstly um bring out thanks again to terry um for her help in hosting and i also want to um, put out um some thanks as well to uh, brian uh, collins who has been quite brilliant in the last couple of weeks in sharing his knowledge and information and answering a number of your calls. So I'm hoping that um, in the coming weeks that we will um, have a, a range of different speakers on, not just, uh, not just myself, uh, because there is a great number of brilliant minds and tremendous information and knowledge that is with us, and I think we should definitely uh, see that we can get some feedback and and some sharing of that knowledge. Tonight, I just want to, because I've been away from these calls the last uh, few weeks, I just want to bring an update uh, to you all in some background on the deeds of divine protest and dishonor that went up on December the 21st. So I want to go through that because some of you may have read them, some of you may not, some of you may not know what I'm talking about, but I, I, I don't want to go through that and, and explain the purpose, what it is and, and why. Given um, many of you are in the process of either sending your first ecclesiastical deed poll or are now following up in um, following up the next deed from a, a deed of dishonour, I want to go through some of the, the useful information that we continue to collect and put up on uh, the One Heaven website. There's a section there now. and I want to go through that with you all and highlight some of the new points and, and just highlight some of the, the, the recent questions and answers and tips on that. I want to spend a bit of time too 
on uh, filling the blanks, I call this of filling in the credibility gaps, if you like, between some of the historical knowledge that I've shared with you in the last uh, few weeks and last few months about the origin of the legal system that we're dealing with today, uh, the origin of power of the Jesuits, um, the origin of and, and influence of the Vatican, and, and really try and, if you like, make some sense of some of these issues like the three forms of law, the th three forms of the court, how we, can we prove this is true, uh, where did this come from and, and why. So I, I think this is important and over time I will be able to refer you to uh, actual research documents that will be up on the web to go and see. And I then I guess also want to answer some of the ongoing, just ongoing questions and concerns people may have uh, as far as you know what's behind this. There's been some important changes in the way that we are approaching the role of office bearers uh, and by that I mean the concept of there being any kind of um, flesh being uh, a claiming a position of stewardship or trusteeship in relation to any of you or anyone that hears this call. Um, this has always been to me a concern and we've now come up with a, uh, I believe, a brilliant um, and divinely inspired solution which is to call upon our spiritual members so that when we speak of ourselves being one nation under God or one um, community under God, truly there's no one standing between us and the divine, which is what it should be. So I want to go through that, those important changes. But as always, I'm going to try and keep the discussions to the hour so that we can allow a good hour to answer questions, concerns, questions people have, um, so we can answer those questions as, as clear as possible. I will try, I keep saying this, but I will try to keep my answers to a, to a minimum uh, so that we can get through as many questions as possible and, and to allow people to follow up their questions with, with further questions. So let's start uh, firstly with the December the 21st, Day of Divine Protest and Dishonour, the seven deeds that were issued on, uh, on that day. So as I'm about to talk about uh, some documents that are actually up on One Heaven, I'm going to ask you all who are on the call and those that come on later and listen, I'm referring to the site uh, one-heaven.org and when you get to that site, I ask that you can, uh, when you get to the home page, uh, you should see uh, down the middle bottom a box that says uh, factum in Pietatis Divini, the seven deeds of divine protest and dishonor, December 21, 2010. So that's the box that I'd like you all to click on, and that is the seven deeds that I'd like to begin tonight's conversation in talking about. We are in an incredible moment in history. We did not determine the importance of this. People in previous generations determined the importance of this. The Mayans um, 2,000 years ago set their calendars to 2012. Uh, a thousand years ago the prophecies of Molokai, who based on my research I believe is not a saint but is the hiding of prophecies of Moloch, otherwise known as Baal Moloch, otherwise known as Satan, through the Roman cult being the most important, uh, one of the most important prophecies of the Roman cult, the prophecies of Moloch or the prophecies of Saint Molokai, which identifies that there is some 112 odd popes that will reign and the last pope that will reign is Petar, Peter, uh, the father. Um, which I believe is going to be a spiritual role and the last Pope therefore is the current Pope. The third secret of Fatima, the book of Daniel, 1260 days, 1260 years, book of Revelation, 1260 days, 1260 years, the reign 
of the Antichrist, the reign of the deceivers, the heretics, the evil. And if we take the date of the first crowning of the Vicar of Christ being um, Zacharias, being uh, Carloman under the Pippins, and we add 1260 years to that, we come to 2011. Now, if people want to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about Carloman, the, um, the son of Charles Martel and uh, the uncle of uh, Charlemagne. If you go to one o n e hyphen evil dot org, it's one o n e hyphen evil dot org, and you click on under most evil organisations the Roman cult, and you go down and you see a link to the Catholic Church there, and you click on that link in the second paragraph, Catholic Church, then it will go through and give you the background of who exactly created the Catholic Church and why and the date that it was created. Even though it was created by good people, it was created, unfortunately, um, for the wrong ends, is 751. So the most, one of the most important prophecies in history for over 2,500 years points to this year. Nostradamus pointing to this year. There are an unprecedented number of incredibly important historical prophecies that point to 2011. And on top of that, we know that one of the 70-year cycles that the ruling of Leet had been using uh, since 1569, the one this year is the expiry of the 70-year cycle of personal property uh, we refer to, you know, currency is expiring. So we've had the problem in 2009, this year 2011 is a reaction, then 2013 will be the solution if they are still in power. So even in their system, this is a major year, a massive year in terms of the collapsing, the deliberate collapsing of the dominant currencies on the planet and replacing it with something else. So with all that, uh, we enter the arena. Now, what part do we have to play? Well... Um, part of the mystery of Revelation, part of the mystery of the Apocalypse is that you can read something over and over and over again and you still may not realise how on earth, uh, through divine inspiration, it might come about. I mean, an obvious one would be the dead shall rise. Anyone that uh, was brought up a Catholic or anyone that has brought up as a Muslim uh, or brought up as a Jew will know, or brought up as an Anglican, will know that a profession of your faith is at the day of judgment, the dead shall rise. But if someone has gone and studied physics and history, logic, one realises that uh, you can't break the laws of physics. <clears throat> one, the Catholic Church certainly says that, that God can, but and, and the physics, laws of physics may be bended, but considering the, the return and the, in some thriller movie like of people rising from the grave doesn't seem like a, a very um, real possibility. And yet it is a fundamental profession of faith that if you are to believe in the divine and divine prophecy that this will come true in the day of judgment. Well, in the last few calls, in the last few months, we have revealed to people the existence of these Sester KV trusts, these trusts that the Bar Association do not want anyone to know about. They deny, they lie, flat stick, in front, on court, recorded in camera, they will not admit that any trust exists, let alone Sester KV. And we were talking about some of the biggest lies that people are using against ecclesiastical deed polls in a moment. But they do exist, they're real, and we have them listed and explained under positive law exactly what Sister KV trusts are. So we see that uh, amidst all the things that are occurring, that there is an important insight um, and an important role for us to play, not to be passive observers to history, but to be active participants in history. And how do we know this to be true? We know this to be true because when we read what was spoken 2000.